I was promised uh, part two of Brompton Cemetery. I can never say them, Brompton Cemetery. I no longer have my cold, so hopefully this should be a bit better. The coffins and everything I'm going to do at the end, and we're going to investigate, first of all, some famous people in their graveyards. Not their graveyard, their graves. I bet this is the boxer. Which one? I don't know, the one with the lion on. Why? I don't know. Uh, yes, I think it was on this side. Like I said, there's only five things marked on the map. Oh, I've got that on video. Uh, this is a warm Is it? I'm sure it is. No, it is, it's the boxer. Is it John Jackson? English bare knuckle boxer John Jackson was influential in securing prize fighting's recognition as a legitimate sport in England. A boxer by amateur status, Jackson competed in only three public matches and on the 15th of April 1795 he won the Championship of England against Daniel Mendoza. According to legend, he taught boxers how to counter blows, judge distances accurately and work with agile feet. Although Gentleman Jackson had a formidable reputation, he was enormously popular and well respected. A brooding lying atop his striker memorial was a gift from his friends and admirers. During the First World War, Royal Navy Air Service Officer Reginald Alexander John Warnford air bombed a Zeppelin, thus he received the Victorian Cross. In spite of the Zeppelin's defensive machine gun fire, Warnford managed to drop his bombs on it, the last of which set the airship ablaze. The airship crashed in St. Amundsburg later that day. Erected by readers of the Daily Express to commemorate the heroic explosion destroying a Zeppelin airship. Well, that's obviously what killed him. Then. James used to drop bombs from Zeppelin's. So he's obviously the pilot. His sister's buried there as well. He died ten days after. So yes, upon uh, researching, we found out that he did in, di in fact die afterwards in, a, in an accident. He was frying a test flight and one of the right-hand wings collapsed and this led to a catastrophic failure of the airframe. Neither occupants were harnessed, so they were both thrown out of the aircraft and um, suffered fatal injuries. Warnford died of his injuries on the way to hospital and he was buried here. So here we have a war memorial for the Chelsea pensioners. Now they are famous around the world for their iconic, eye-catching, bright red long coat uniforms. They're all veterans that have served their country during some of the biggest conflicts of the last century. They are residents at the Royal Hospital in Chelsea, which is a retirement home for former members of the British Army. After their service has ended and they have retired from civilian life, they can often feel isolated and lonely, but the Royal Hospital provides a place where they can belong with their comrades. Many of them have lost their partners and just crave company. So to become a Chelsea pensioner, as long as you've fought in a war and are willing to give up your pension, your army pension, you can go live rent-free, get your food paid for you in Chelsea Hospital and live the rest of your days in comfort with other veterans. These veterans having fought for King, for Queen, for England yeah! and for Empire in almost every part of the world gone home to die in peace, honoured and respected by their fellow countrymen. And so is that what you said? Oh, look at him. You're a fat boy. You're a fat boy.
Tom Foy was a well-loved British comedian. He joined the performing industry as an artist and a clown. He joined the Wild West show before heading to London and finding his fame as a comedian and pantomime performer. As a comedian, he was famous for his sketches such as Tom Foy and his donkey. His first successful sketch was the Yorkshire Lad in London, which eventually became the Yorkshire Man in London. He was billed as the famous little comedian. On stage, while at the Argyle Theatre in Birkenhead, he collapsed. He died just two weeks later at the age of 38. It's a strange run, isn't it? Here lies Frederick Richards Leyland, some time of Woolton Hall, Liverpool. Princess Gate, London, born September, don't know, died January, don't know. During the Indian Mutiny, Kaf was a captain in the 56th Bengal Native Infantry and received the Victoria Cross. He received it because under heavy fire, Captain Kaf and others from the 14th Punjab Rifles carried off the body of a lieutenant in April 1858 during the attack on the Fort Rahaya, India. He then went on to rescue one of the privates who had been severely wounded. Here is the grave of Henry Pettit. He was a great success in his career as a dramatist, actor and author. Now his uh, memorial in the, in the cemetery is topped with a broken column. This is a poignant Victorian symbol of it indicated that a life was cut too short as Harry was only 45 when he died of typhoid fever. So next we're going to visit the grave of the political activist Emmeline Pankhurst. She was best known for organising the suffragette moving and helping women win the right to vote. She then went on to found the Women's Franchise League to provide married women with fighting rights. Emmeline died on 14th of June 1928, shortly after women were actually granted equal voting rights with men.
how old that bit would in there is. And there's a Bible on the floor. So I think that's really strange, like, just, 